Morning class, we're going to go over uh, chapter 9, so we're going to start going back to this. A model where I record videos and, and you come and take notes. So we're going to go over um, this chapter. This chapter is uh, sine, cosine, tangent. It's your trig ratios, trigonomic ratios. Uh, what trigonomic trig ratios are, are the study of how the angles, um, how the angles relate to the side lengths. And so we'll go over uh, one ratio today, two tomorrow. And, uh, continue, and then see how we use them in different things. Uh, there's three trig ratios, sine, cosine, and ten, uh, tangent, depending upon uh, what angle is given to us, or actually depending upon what sides are given to us and what we're trying to find with it. Um, the size of the triangle doesn't matter. Um, it just We're looking at angle measurement and then the lengths of each side. Uh, so the first ratio that we're going to look at today is tangent ratio. Uh, you'll see it on your calculator is T-A-N, and uh, we will need, uh, we'll use the back of our book and a calculator for it. So first one, tangent ratio. When we look at an angle, that's, so this only works in a right triangle, all right? If we have a right triangle, and uh, so we're going to look at those two other angles. So we have a right angle, and then angle A, and we could say angle B up there, okay? Tangent ratio is the angle that's opposite and adjacent next to it. The hypotenuse is still the hypotenuse, so we don't use the uh, we don't use the hypotenuse for the tangent ratio. So we have two angles. So the angle that's next to it, angle A is made up by that hypotenuse and adjacent leg. So we go uh, the tangent ratio is opposite over adjacent. So write that down. We shorten it down op op over adjacent. So the tangent of an angle is the opposite leg over the adjacent leg. Again, this allows us to find the measure of an angle as well as the sign. So if I want to know, okay, write the tangent ratio for angle A for angle B. So if I start with angle A, angle A is, this is the hypotenuse, so we're not going to use it in tangent ratio. So from angle A, the side opposite of it is angle 12, the side adjacent to it is 5. So we'd say tangent of angle A is 12 over 5. Then if we want to go tangent of angle B, we start at angle B, the side opposite that would be 5 over 12. So this allows us to actually find the measure of an angle. So if we want to do tangent, okay, find the tangent ratio of angle 37, we would go the tangent of 37 equals the opposite leg, 3 over the adjacent leg, which is 4. And we could do it here. We go Opposite of angle 37 is 6, adjacent would be 8. And always reduce down if possible. So we want to use a calculator to find the missing side of the length. So if I look at this, this would be tangent of angle 54 is equal to opposite the y over the adjacent. So we'd write that, tangent 54 equals opposite over adjacent. Now, how do I get rid of 10? If I want to solve for y to get rid of 10, I multiply by 10. So then you can type this into your calculators. You can go 10 times tangent 54. Now one thing we'll, we'll go through in class tomorrow, just making sure that it says 54 degree or degrees on your calculator. But we type that in and you would get 13.8 equals y. Go through another one similar to it. So we want to solve for x, so we go tangent of angle of 20 is equal to opposite x over 8. We go ahead, again, do the same thing, multiply by 8, plug that into your calculator, and we get 2.91, saying this length from here to here is 2.91. Now, this one's a little bit different. As we go to work with it, we'd start here, tangent of 28 equals opposite 2 over z. Now, we need to get rid of z, so we go ahead and multiply each side by z, so we get rid of it, so we multiply by z, and now we have to get rid of tangent 28, so we divide by 28, tangent 28. So now we go into our calculator and go 2, divide by tangent 28, and we get 3.76. Okay, now we want to find the angle measurement. So if we think about uh, this idea, okay, when we're solving equations, we do the opposite, opposite operation to solve for x. So if I, addition and subtraction are opposite of one another, inverses of one another. Multiplication and division are inverses of one another. We do the same thing here. 
the inverse to tangent would be tangent inverse or inverse tangent. So this is what we're going to see. Again, this is something that we do on our calculators to solve for. So we have tangent. The inverse would be tangent to the negative 1. Tangent inverse. So we want to find the measurement of angle A. We start with this. Tangent of angle X is equal to opposite over adjacent. So we write that. Now, we want to get rid of tangent, so we do the tangent inverse to both sides. So when you do that, it cancels that one off. And what we're left with is x is equal to the tangent inverse of 8 over 6, or you could say 4 over 3. And now you type that into your calculator just like that. And when you get it, you get about 53.1 degrees. That angle is 53.1. Which, then... We can go ahead and you know, get an idea about what this angle is. So this is about 36.9, so, or about 37, which makes sense. This angle is smaller, this side shorter than that. So that's the other way you can always check. Again, same thing, tangent of angle X is equal to 61 over 100. Then to get rid of tangent, we do the inverse. That cancels it off, and we get X is equal to the tangent inverse of 61 over 100. We'd, simply, we'd go ahead and plug that into your calculators and you'd solve. So for today, just today we go over our tangent ratio, which is tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. Biggest thing to do is uh, then to get rid of the tangent, if we're trying to solve for an angle, then we'd use a tangent inverse.